Welcome to this series on neural network programming with PyTorch. In this video, we will look at the prerequisites needed to be best prepared for the series. We'll get an overview of the series and a sneak peek at a project we'll be working on. This will give us a good idea about what we'll be learning and what skills we'll have by the end of the series. Without further ado, let's get started. There are two primary prerequisites needed for this series, programming experience and neural network experience. Let's take a look into both of these categories and see what's required. In terms of programming, we'll be using Python in this series. Knowing Python beforehand is not necessary. However, understanding programming in general is a requirement. Any programming experience will do though. If you're already familiar with concepts like variables, objects, and loops, that type of information is all you'll need to successfully participate in this series. In terms of neural network experience, we'll be using PyTorch in this series. And one of the things that we'll discover about PyTorch itself is that it's a very thin deep learning neural network API for Python. This means that from a programming perspective, we'll be very close to programming neural networks from scratch. For this reason, it will definitely be beneficial to be aware of neural network and deep learning concepts. It's not a requirement, but it's recommended to take the deep learning fundamental series first. To kick the series off, we have two parts. Let's look at each part in detail. Part one of the neural network programming series consists of two sections. Section one will introduce PyTorch and its features. Importantly, we'll see why we should even use PyTorch in the first place. Stay tuned for that, it's a must see. Additionally, we'll cover CUDA, a software platform for parallel programming on NVIDIA GPUs. If you've ever wondered why deep learning uses GPUs in the first place, we'll be covering those details in the video on CUDA. This one is also a must see. Section two will be all about tensors, the data structures of deep learning. Having a strong understanding of tensors is essential for becoming a deep learning programming pro. So we'll be covering tensors in great detail. We'll be using PyTorch for this, of course, but the concepts and operations we'll learn about tensors in this section are necessary for understanding neural networks in general and will apply for any deep learning framework. That's it for part one. Let's look at part two of the series now. Part two of the neural network programming series is where we'll kick off the first deep learning project we'll be building together. Part two is comprised of three sections. The first section will cover data and data processing for deep learning in general and how it relates to our deep learning project. Since tensors are the data structures of deep learning, we'll be using all of the knowledge we learned about tensors from part one. We'll introduce the fashion in this data set that we'll be using to build a convolutional neural network for image classification. And we'll see how PyTorch datasets and data loaders are used to streamline the data pre-processing and training process. The second section of part two will be all about building neural networks. We'll be building a convolutional neural network using PyTorch. This is where we'll see that PyTorch is super close to building neural networks from scratch. This section is also where the deep learning fundamental series will come in handy most because we'll see the actual implementation of many of the concepts that are covered in that series. The third section will show us how to train neural networks by constructing a training loop. The training loop optimizes the neural network's weights to fit our data set. As we'll see, the training loop is built using an actual Python loop. Let's go ahead and get an overview of our first project. The first project will consist of the following components. We have our Python imports, we have our data processing and ETL pipeline that we use PyTorch datasets and data loaders for. We have our model, our convolutional neural network. We have the training process where we build the training loop. And we have finally the analytics where we're gonna be using a confusion matrix that will give us insight into where our model is predicting correctly and incorrectly. By the end of part two, we'll have a complete understanding of this project. And this will enable us to be strong users of PyTorch as well as give us a deeper understanding of deep learning and neural networks in general. Deep learning and programming are both superpowers that allow us humans to make the world a better place for all. We can now do more than just be intelligent. We can build intelligence. We hope you'll join us in building collective intelligence by taking this series. Let us hear from you at the end and importantly along the way. Good luck and I'll see you in the series.